Mayong hapon. Thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. This is our third and last live stream for the Art Response Project for this month at least. In celebration of National Arts Month, we have invited speakers to discuss important topics that can help artists in their practice. The topics were suggested by Richard Bokshani and Riel Hilario. Thanks to them, we were able to organize these talks. So this afternoon, we are joined by stalwarts of the Philippine art community. Each of our speakers will be weighing in on their thoughts about gallery representation. So get your coffee ready or your tea ready and let's meet our guests. Avi Felix is a curator, teacher, writer, multidisciplinary artist, and advocate of gender, culture, and environment. A graduate of art studies and candidate for a master's degree in art history at the University of the Philippines Diliman, where she taught cinema studies at the UP Film Institute. She now teaches humanities at the Department of Art Studies. Avi is the founding program director of Visual Art and Design School Young Artist Studio from 2009 to present. A member of Independent Curators International or ICI New York, Avi has been curating exhibitions in Manila since 2011 in museums and alternative spaces. In 2012, she opened her own art gallery called VMIM, Contemporary Art Gallery, where she currently serves as head curator in its gallery spaces in Alabang, Artigas, and Quezon City. Avi is also a member of the Executive Council of the NCCA National Committee on Art Galleries and contributor to several non-government organizations. Her research work focuses on feminist history in the arts, while her literary writing are, more, are mostly prose and poetry about women's experiences. In between wearing her many hats, she paints, embroiders, sings, dances, and is a full-time homeschooling mother to budding artist Malaya Esquera. Ricky Francisco has been working for private museums since 1999, has an independent curatorial practice since 2011. Among the institutions he has served with are the Ayala Museum, the Lopez Museum, the Perito Calao Foundation, and the Singapore Tyler Print Institute. The he is the recipient of several professional grants from Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, Southeast Asian Regional Center for Archaeology and Fine Arts, International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, International Committee for Museums and Collections of Modern Art, the National Heritage Board of Singapore, and the Japan Foundation. He is a member of the Call Asia Project, which advocates for preventive conversation, a conservation of museum collections in museums and heritage sites around Southeast Asia. Our last guest is Remigio David, is currently um, the artistic director of Aldro Mondo Art Contemporanea and the chairman of Resources Asia. Prior to this, he served as a senior, he served senior officer roles in Barclays Bank in London. Banca Commerciale in Tessa in Milan, and PCI Bank in Frankfurt. He graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Economics from the University of the Philippines in 1973, and shortly after began his career working for San Miguel Corporation. He has also received an MS Economics degree from Wharton School of Economics in the University of Pennsylvania, and an MBA from the INSEAD Fontainebleau in France as a multi- faceted art connoisseur, his global travels exposed him to the highest standards of artistic expression that he advocates for in the Philippines through his devout art patronage. So I'm excited to start our discussion today. Please welcome Avi Felix, Ricky Francisco, and Yumi Hio David. Right. So let's start with um, our discussion. Um, our first question, what is gallery representation? Um, let's hear it from Sir Remigio David first. Okay. 
So yes, gallery representation is basically um, a gallery and an artist uh, working arrangement or collaboration, if I may say it, uh, that defines basically the roles and uh, tasks of, uh, of each. You know? Generally, when uh, a gallery represents an artist, you know, uh, there are prior uh, standards that the gallery sets to be able to consider an artist to be to, to represent a particular artist in uh, in its activities as a gallery and uh, at the same time also in its activities uh, internationally. Um, some gallery representations are formalized by a contract. Some are generally, which is happening right now in the Philippines, generally this relationship is very informal where uh, it starts basically from, from experience with Altomondo uh, where an artist uh, uh, agrees to, to be represented uh, by the gallery by allowing the particular artist to show either on a group show or in a solo show. Now, um, the, the more formal relationship uh, that uh, is um, an adjunct of that particular relationship between the gallery and the, and the artist is uh, when the artist formalizes a relationship by signing uh, what we call the management contract, where all the um, relationships, activities, collaborations are defined and uh, spelled out. It's a kind of management contract because the gallery commits, strictly speaking, to uh, a specific amount of uh, commission or, or, or money uh, to fulfill the needs or the requirements of the artist because the artist as a, as a professional needs to be assured of its, uh, of its income, you know, of his income. And uh, the gallery um, on its part uh, commits also to, to meet the, the financial objectives or financial goals of the, of the artist. This is, of course, something very, very uh, done. I mean, this is something done uh, more often in international gallery, galleries and in the international community. In the Philippines, it's, uh, it's pretty loose still. There are, I know that uh, uh, there are some contracts that were made between the artists and the galleries. It's just a, uh, it's a loose arrangement from the artist. He just wanted to be considered by a particular or X uh, gallery. He signs a contract without defining the, the business aspect of it and the, and the uh, artistic uh, expressions that he needed to pursue. Because there are some galleries that even uh, uh, ask artists to do particular uh, looks or particular pictorial uh, imageries that uh, it believes can can be sold. You know that is the the, the more uh, uh, selfish, how should I say, uh, the more selfish motivations on the part of uh, of, of the galleries, and that uh, is one also of the probably. Uh, I don't normally, you know, I mean, you don't do those things to, to an artist. You let the artist grow on, on his own, you know, I mean, uh, seek his own level, pursue his own concepts and themes and do what he has to do. So basically that's the arrangement, you know, in, in, in uh, what gallery representation should be. The gallery also helps, of course, in uh, expanding, you know, the, the horizon and the perspective of the artist by providing assistance in uh, media mileage, uh, monographs, etc., and then representing the artist in international art fairs, for instance, or any other what we call this relationship that the artist has with either museums or uh, other galleries. Basically, that's the, the relationship. I'd like to uh, put in some more input on that. I react to Mr. David. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Ilomoka for hosting this. And although I work for museums, 
I'm very grateful to our two panelists, Mr. Boy David and Ms. Avi Felix, who gave me my first curatorial breaks as a curator, as an independent curator. Avi and Sir Boy gave me my breaks about 10 years ago, and now I'm working for museums primarily. Uh, and uh, I'd just like to weigh in. Um, basically, artists and galleries have this symbiotic relationship. Um, we could see it from an economic standpoint where the artist is a producer and the gallerist is representing the demand. So it's a supply and demand side. Um, normally, an artist can go and produce art and then market, in, market it by himself or herself, but with the help of a gallery who is in touch with other collectors and other institutions of the art scene, the artist could go further and farther. Um, usually, a gallery will enter into a representation contract where the, where the artist will exclusively show with the gallery for a specific period of time in exchange for protecting the artist against um, abuses, for representing the artist in their space as well as other spaces like art fairs abroad or getting them in network with museums and placing their artworks in very important collections so that it, all in all, the gallery is in charge of managing or mapping out the career of the artist. However, there are also trade-offs to this, of course. Aside from exclusivity, um, the, art, uh, the, the gallery will sometimes ask the artist to produce a specific amount of works per year or have specific number of shows, solo shows and uh, group shows in the year. But, also, but always, this has to be a balanced thing um, where the artist is protected economically and professionally. Thank you, Sir uh, Marie Mejia David and Sir Ricky Francisco. Um, our, next, our next topic would be the pros and cons of gallery representation. So, um, Ms. Abby, if you want to share the pros and then the cons, of course, of gallery representation. Sorry, yeah. Um, to, well, first off, two level off, parang we're, we're speaking under the framework that, uh, yun na, as Ricky have said and Dr. David has expanded, it's a symbiotic relationship. So it's the analogy of existing in an ecology of the world of art, na each of the players are, ano, are benefiting from each other. So that's where we're coming from. So the, the, the pros will be, of course, as artists, it will be difficult for you to always set yourself out there. So parang, uh, the gallery serves as a filter to that. Like there will be, the audience will be very candid about the, what they think about your work. You know, they, they can just easily judge your work out there, right? You know, so the gallery can be a filter to that para less stress to the artist. And also in the legal sense of it, because there are taxes to be paid, yung ganyan, there are receipts to be issued, the gallery should be able to do that. Um, I have not had any exclusive contracts with artists, but there are a couple of artists who chose to just exclusively be represented by us. But my work as a gallery is, uh, is mainly concerned with um, agreements per work. So... Um, we represent them in terms of the works we have of them, the pieces we have. So with that, we should also be able to take care of the work. So that is yung very practical condo name storage. Because artists do not have that much storage. They cannot take care of their artworks, diba? Palagi. And of course, syempre, the exposure because um, galleries um, take on the chance to exhibit in art fairs. Yung ganyan. So the the chance to be represented in in uh, venues like that is done via a gallery, not not individually as artists. Maraming ganong events. You cannot represent yourself in events like that. Um, the cons will be a lot, no? I think we will have a little more time with that later on. Pero I'd like to focus on the the pros muna. So that parang um, with the gallery having the intention to forward its vision with its practice and operation. 
um, the artist becomes a collaborator to that. Parang that's how I see it. The artists and the gallery collaborate. So again, thinking about it as an ecology system, uh, any growth that the gallery has, has will be a growth to the artist too and vice versa. So it's really a collaboration to present your work, your vision, the vision of your artwork, and basically what you think of art talaga, what is art. Yung ganon. It's a constant questioning of art and um, defining art together. That, I think, is the beauty of working with the gallery. Well, I'd like to add on that. On top of that, because you mentioned storage. So artists don't usually have storage, but the gallery has um, storage and protecting the work. Uh, normally, good galleries must be able to uh, handle the work properly and protect it. They also have to be the ones to take care of the logistics of bringing whatever is sold at the gallery into the collector's house. So imagine you, kung kayo yung artist, tas iniisip nyo pa pati yun. That's also a big thing right now. Uh, pero ano, on top of this, I'd like to talk about pricing then. Um, kasi dito nagiging conf, ano, medyo gray line. A gallery knows the demand for an artwork or an artist, parang ganyan. So uh, sometimes hirap yung artist to put a price to their work, but the gallery has more parang ano, exposure experience to be able to help you set a good price. A, a good gallery will do this for you. So an artist must be able to work with good galleries and not galleries that are abusive. Kasi doon papasok yung horror stories then. Pero at the same time, hindi rin naman dapat kinakalaban ng artist mismo yung gallery that represents them by selling their works under, I don't know, like privately. So, I know, siguro, Mr. David, you could tell us about some of your experiences. Yeah, social media, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, um, you know, at, uh, during the, when, when this started, wala, some uh, buyers will resort to uh, cutting short the representation of the gallery. And that, of course, uh, we're helpless. Even if we say uh, you should not do it, uh, but they just do it uh, anyway. And then, of course, there are some uh, artists also that are really very unprofessional. They get represented and there, there is a particular time uh, uh, spectrum uh, that they should respect that, uh, for instance, uh, after the show, it should be uh, professionally still handled by the gallery and that uh, whether he sells it or he does not sell it, or what, if he sells it within that period, he should uh, professionally provide the gallery uh, its share no? of, of the proceeds of the sale. But uh, more often than not, and I've seen that on many, many occasions, and that is also the lamentations also of uh, so many other galleries, these very unprofessional artists, they just resort to, you know, uh, such, uh, such practice, very unprofessional. And uh, of course, uh, when it comes to storage also, please remember that, uh, you know, the, the, the spaces provided for by the galleries uh, for storage is not uh, unlimited. It's also, there should be some time to be respected. Normally, uh, despite our incessant calls to some artists to get back their uh, uh, artworks, they never come and uh, pick it up, you know. You know remember that the, the gallery also does not assure uh, the, it, it, its responsibility as far as the storage is concerned. It's only limited to a certain specific period of time. Beyond that, it's not anymore the, what we call this. And in our arrangement with the artist, that is very, very well uh, defined that after, let's say, six months and you don't get it, whatever happens to it, uh, if let's say there is a, of course, the gallery takes care of it. But in case of, let's say, fire or some other calamities that uh, take place, you know, the, the gallery cannot be held responsible for it. And uh, some people do not see it that way, you know? So uh, I guess uh, on the part of the artist, there must be some kind of conscious effort at uh, understanding also what the galleries uh, are doing for them. 
and uh, it is so easy to, to accuse, but uh, they should also realize the many uh, tasks that the uh, galleries uh, undertake in order to uh, widen the, uh, the marketability of a particular artist. After all, uh, it all boils down to being able to sell an uh, artwork. And there are also those that will, I mean, artists or galleries like us, for instance, we will, we will be showing or feature uh, the works of an artist without any thought about uh, generating any income on it. It's just sustaining our, what do you call this, our, our image for a gallery, uh, being a gallery that, that sustains that kind of uh, artistic expression. So it's not all money here, you know, I mean, uh, at least as far as Alpermont is concerned, it's not always like that. We are even, uh, we have already sponsored and uh, uh, shown many, many artworks or many art shows that uh, were not really at the very, at the very beginning uh, without any interest in generating the normal expectations, financial expectations that the government should, should generate. Yeah. Abi, I think ano, magandang ipasok dito yung, ano, yung vision mo of how the symbiosis between the artist and the gallery is a way of defining art. Maybe you could share more of that. Yes, Sigura yes. was speaking specifically from my point of view that I'm running art spaces because yeah, I'm, I'm primarily an art historian and a curator. I wanted a space to practice. And of course, parang you don't want to be at the mercy of spaces. Eh, you also want to be parang salino mong call. So that's how Beaming Contemporary Art started. So with that, for me, that really represents my view of art. Like, I want art to make sense. I want art. I, I, really, I really believe that art can transform lives and societies, etc. So that's how I see it. Um, the problems I've had, it's a spectrum of, you know, of problems and you know, successes, you know, but to, to just illustrate the polarity of it. I've worked with artists who really believe in what, what, I, what I say, like what I want for the space. And I've experienced like working with them in exhibitions and then long after the exhibit has been done um, and then they have sales of their works from that show, they contact me to remit money to me to, to give me a portion of it. Even if the work is not no longer with me or in my storage, they still uh, remit it to the gallery because they believe that in the, in the gallery, so they want to, unrend, to, to help in... Uh, assuring that the gallery exists for a long time. There are also artists who, like in the middle of an exhibit, will pull out the work. And then I'll know na lang from somewhere <laughs> the artwork has been sold, etc. So that is uh, no, one of the major challenges with running running an art space. And like, like Mr. David, meron kasi tayong idea that galleries, the gallery work is for earning a lot. Eh, yung ganun, parang, you have a gallery, mayaman ka. Ganun yung, ano, eh, yung, ano, uh, analogy. Well, I cannot say that the gal gallery work is not, ano, a promising in terms of money. The same way that individual art practice is also promising financially. But it doesn't happen overnight. Yun nga, as I said, it's a collaboration. It's not like Yung notion natin of art as uh, artist as parang stars, you get what I mean, parang when we when we think of artists as stars and not like cultural workers, yung ganon. If we're coming from a point of view that artists are cultural workers and galleries are also stakeholders to that cultural work, we see it in a different light. But if we feel and think that and believe that. Uh, artists are geniuses or stars, yung ganyan. It's very hard kasi they will expect the gallery to make them stars. That sometimes uh, the artwork no longer matters. Parang that, that to me is the hardest eh, to work with. Like, I wanna, I wanna produce shows with good art, the art that makes sense, etc. It was hard to navigate it, in, especially in the beginning. 
because artists will approach you, they will they will tell you that they understand your vision, pero pag ayan, exhibit na, there, there will be a lot of arguments with what you consider as worth exhibiting and what's not. Again, kasi with gallery work, um, it's also the artist representing the gallery. So dual siya, yung, hindi lang yung gallery representing the artist. So in terms of space, like the walls of the gallery, the responsibility, there is a responsibility to what you put on your wall. So you cannot just put put whatever. If you don't believe in the work, it's very hard to put it there. Uh, I've also had conflicts with artists. Yung parang they feel like because you represent them for that show, they feel like they can just put whatever on the walls. Yung ganon. So if if you think about it that way, parang ano ba? Kasi it all boils down to medyo blurred yung lines eh. in in Philippine practice. Na some some artists do not understand what the curatorial work is. Yung parang they they come in and overstepping the work of a curator or a uh, um a marketing person yung ganon. The hardest for me also as a person is when they see me as owning a gallery, they feel like I'm a salesperson. Yung ganon, but you're a gallery, you're a salesperson. So I'm kind of ano pa, minimized into that work. Na I no longer see that I'm a curator, I study art, yung ganon. Parang they see you as tagabenta. Well, of course, it is our role also to facilitate sales and transaction. And of course, if we don't make an effort into making sales, we didn't come to exist longer in the gallery. But then, it kind of minimizes the collaboration. Parang it, it destroys the beauty of the collaboration. Same mm-hmm. as if the gallery owner naman will see the artist as just a pinta. May ganoon din kasi na tagapinta lang siya and then the gallery the galleries will order what kind of ano of artwork so parang gawa ka ng ganito gawa ka ng ganito kasi mabenta to ito yung ganyan it destroys the ano the opportunity to really grow and contribute in the art world yung hindi lang kasi siya parang tindahan siya ng damit eh well even even clothing stores they they give a lot of thought to that too so Yung ganon, parang, um, there has to be some kind of exchange. Not only monetary exchange, but also an exchange of energies, an exchange of ideas in the in the process of this, ano, the dynamics of representation. And I think speaking of exchange, it has to be a fair and responsible exchange. A lot of artists din kasi come into a scene without really knowing that it is an ecosystem and there is a business aspect to it. That, for example, a gallery has to pay rent, has to pay salaries for their art handlers, has to get a photographer to do great photos for the artworks, for marketing, has to pay for storage. So there are other things. Yes, so the artist must also be responsible that when they uh, show at your gallery, they respect your consignment period but at least to give you a fair chance to be able to do your job as well, right? Mm-hmm. Sir Boy, I have a question for you, actually. Uh, yeah. This is coming from this, the part that I know that you don't represent artists exclusively right now, but you're thinking of it. Why is that? Is yeah, because uh, basically the reason why I am seriously thinking about it is because um, I have... I think developed so many good artists and uh, without uh, uh, making myself uh, feeling so important. I have a good eye for good art. I have been exposed and uh, I can spot a good artist just watching his work. And um, my lament is uh, after showing this artist, uh, or these artists, they, you know, they wonder, they go some other, what you call this, the lure of uh, uh, other galleries is uh, so, so attractive. Uh, and they just, uh, you know, parang you're just dropped like a hot potato after they have uh, collaborated with you and uh, forget the relationship. 
So yung uh, making them uh, work with you in a, in a kind of contract, you know, that uh, that's binding, will somehow lessen that risk, you know, of uh, masakit yung lagi ka na develop ng art, pagkat ng artist, tapos bihira-bihira yung talaga mag-stick sa'yo. Kahit na ano pang ipakita mo na magagandang example, na trying to be professional, etc., etc., and dami niyan eh. Kasi yun nga, uh, yung, I'm so sorry to say, I do not want to be castigating here, but yung level talaga ng professionalism is so low. It's so, um, it's, it, it happens so many times. And uh, uh, is that the level of professionalism that our, our artists can show? Kasi hindi naman lahat ah. I, I have worked with so many good ones that are uh, so full of integrity and uh, will always, kahit na yung minsan nga, nagugulat ako, uh, wala na sa amin, lumampas na yung six months. Pagka nabenta niya, he, he comes back to me and sir, nabenta ko ito and I'll give it to you. And that's the kind of what you call this uh, integrity we're talking about. Kasi nasa sa tao rin yan eh. I mean, uh, unfortunately, and I know, we, we, we know also that uh, they have needs, etc., etc. But ang masakit noon, pagka yung hindi pa na tatapos yung contract, meron na agad uh, na benta, hindi pa sasabihin sa'yo. Uh, yung parang gano'n. But malalaman mo na lang. But what, what can you do? What else can you do? Just leave it to, just leave it to God. You know, hala na siya. But uh, it's, it's, it's like that. Plus, of course, may mga, ang problema pa rin is, uh, kung siguro naka-bind naka sa'yo yung artist, magkakaroon kayo ng more constant communication. Kasi ang nangyayari, most of the time, um, these, these people, or uh, kahit nasabihin mo pa, may curator na, et cetera, et cetera, nasabihin sa'yo yung mga parameters that you should work on a particular exhibit. Paglabas ng work, my God, uh, you, you cannot imagine uh, where these ideas, where all these artworks come from. You know, and that's always a dilemma of the galleries, particularly in the Philippines. Even in a group show, they will already write down a particular uh, guideline as far as the curatorial aspects of this show is. My God, when you see the artworks, uh, talagang completely detached from the uh, what do you call this, from the the theme. You know? so these are these are. These are the things that uh, galleries usually go through also in, in that kind of relationship. But probably uh, if you have uh, an artist with you in a kind of relationship that is more or less binding for a particular spectrum of time, hopefully that could be addressed and there should be more communications, open communications. And uh, Pinoy is very sensitive. Sometimes uh, they, 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 they take uh, your suggestions as uh, as uh, not very conducive to a collaboration or a fruitful collaboration. Natutuwa ako na relationship yung lagi natin ginagamit. Hmm. Na ano talaga, para talaga siyang ano eh, uh, friendship or even girlfriend-boyfriend relationship na there's always this aspect of trust and mutuality about it. Um, Abby, Abby, would you like to share more about uh, no, that kind of relationship with About me. friendship. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, because, you know, um, running the gallery, I've, I've developed a lot of friendship. One of it is my friendship with you, Ricky, and uh, no, a lot of other artists na nakakatawa yung ganong dynamics, eh, that you're working on a project, um, there is an understanding of what it is for, like the purpose. Mahirap kasi when you're dealing with the art world or the art market, sometimes the purpose can be diminished to earning. But when you and the artist and your other collaborators understand that the purpose of it is really to show art and produce art, to, to have an avenue for that art to be received by an audience, iba yung dynamics ng relationship. Like, magkakaroon ng time to discuss. Cuts. like yung kagaya ng sinasabi ni Mr. David parang ni ibang artist maglalabas na lang sila ng work tapos hindi yun yung theme <laughs> yung ganon and some some times there are artists also that do the future pero meron kasi nga ganong um, um, understanding yung mes misunderstanding now when there is a show it's just an accumulation of works 
been working with artists who have become my friends. And uh, for the last three or four years, I've decided that I only will work with people I have a relationship with. Parang, uh, I know that uh, it has affected my gallery in terms of the number of shows we host. Pero it's a lot lighter for us. Parang it's easier for us. Because because I work with a number of artists no first time got to work with. And then there will be a lot of conflicts. There will be a lot of misunderstandings. So I just said, parang, okay, we don't have to have a lot of shows. <laughs> uh, we just need shows that we will be proud of and happy about. Yung ganun. Parang ayoko na yun kasi parang na, na-experience ko na yan yung ang daming discussion, ang daming discussion, ang daming expectation, and sometimes, of course, um, they will talk against you, yung mga ganun, but not to you. <laughs> against you, but not to you. So, parang sabi ko, parang, if we think about why we exist, like, why am I here? I always ask myself, bakit nga ako nandito? <laughs> so, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for that. Parang, I just want to work with people who are, who are on the same page. Para hindi na siguro, ano, magulo. Yes. Yes, um, that's right, Miss Abby. I understand. It's a, a relationship with responsibilities and with conflicts, but with a little bit of professional conduct. Um, we actually asked our audience um, for questions. And um, to our audience as well, if, you're, uh, if you have questions, you can definitely post them on the comment section and we'll ask our guests those questions. But we have some questions already um, submitted here. Hang on. Okay. So here, what behaviors should artists demonstrate when working with galleries and vice versa? So that's a question from the audience. Um, Tariki, would you like to answer it first? Okay. Um, uh, okay, broad spectrum. Artists should be professional, as Mr. David has always said. When we say professional, let's define it further. Um, professional is sticking to your words, sticking to your commitment. The gallery will I know, invest a lot of time and resources for you in exchange for you to commit to a show and to a certain span of time for, for the gallery to be able to recover its losses by selling your work and allowing and giving you your percentage. So ganun dapat, uh, wish, uh, the, uh, a good partnership, a good uh, relationship is that mutual yung respeto. Pero you should always, the artist should always be aware that not all galleries are good. Some galleries or some artist managers are also abusive. Any relationship that is abusive, you cut it off. What do I mean? Sometimes some galleries do not tell you that your, your artwork was sold or will not remit your payment to you within the specific amount of time that you agreed on. Sa mga gantong kaso, maganda talaga that we have something written para malinaw, para walang issue na kung kunwari, ang show natin ay two weeks, tapos yung consignment period mo ay three months, ang remittance ng bawat sale ay every 30th of the month, uh, you will let us know, I, I will, I, the gallery will let you know kung kakabenta o hindi. Dapat ganun kalinaw, para walang gulo. Correct. Um, if I may add something on that, yung transparency is very, very essential on both uh, parties, the gallery in particular, and of course, uh, the, the, the artists themselves. Uh, pag walang transparency, everything will be blurred. Uh, there will always be issues, there will be conflict. Plus, of course, trust and confidence. Uh, without that, uh, na, no relationship can uh, prosper. You know, if you do not trust the gallery or if you do not trust even your wife or your husband, I mean, how could you carry on with the relationship? Uh, the relationship is very sacred and it should be talaga standing on professional level. Without that, uh, people can say whatever they say. If they do not conduct themselves on, on the standards of professionalism expected of them, 
nothing will uh, be achieved. It, it, it's the root of everything, you know, the professional level, the commitments being met, the respect to the, to the galleries, and of course, the vice versa, I mean, as far as the gallery and the artist is concerned. Uh, lahat naman may mga expectations. Eh. The galleries expect the, the artist to be within the uh, norms, within the bounds of what is uh, discussed or what was agreed, you know. And the uh, role ng artist is to be within those, uh, if not even exceed, you know. Ganun din naman yung gallery. The gallery should exceed also the the expectations of the artist. One sample, as far as we're concerned, you know, if you know that the artwork is already more or less uh, bayad na, our biggest concern is to see to it that the artist is paid as soon as possible. We do not, we do not uh, waste time uh, making the, the, the artist receive his uh, side or commission or his uh, art prize for a particular art uh, work. That's very, very good. Okay. All right, thank, all right, thank you, sir. sir um, here's another question from our uh, viewer. This is more on what are the traits that a gallery look for in an artist? That's a question from our viewer. Um, would you like to answer that, Ms. Abby? Um, siguro, in segue to the previous question, no? whether working in like with a gallery or not, artists should be professional. But I'm working with a gallery for, for a long time now. I've, I've noticed that the successful artists are really the ones who are very professional. That they, they know what their image is, they know what they're doing. At least they have an idea of the direction they want for their career. They keep a documentation of their artworks. Yun, yung parang, they have a system of it. They have their pins, their ano, BIR registrations. Yung ganon. Parang they're really set out to make art their profession. That's really very important. Kasi kapag, kapag walang ganun yung, yung artist, parang hindi niya nakikita yung sarili niya growing into that career. Medyo mahirap to work with that artist. So that's one of the things that I look for. Like, ano ba to? Like, hobby niya ba to? Hobby ba to ng artist? Yung gumawa ng art? Or artist ba siya? Like, because I have my, ano, my personal definition of an artist. Diba? Tignan, artist ba talaga to? Kasi, syempre, yung pagiging artist, hindi lang naman siya about producing a piece of something visual. Hindi lang siya ganun eh. So, that he, if he has an understanding of art, if he has a system, because the, the, the artist cannot rely on the gallery to do all of that for him or her. Yung, yung, ano, yung organization of, ano, of an archive of his works, yung ganyan. Is the artist also open to perhaps new ideas? Because sometimes um, curators in ano, gallery, galleries, gallery workers can see a potential of the artist na sometimes hindi nila nakikita, di ba? In terms of collaboration, uh, we sometimes give challenges to the artist. Parang, can you try to do this? Can you explore this? Yung ganyan. Some artists who are really ano, dedicated to their art is open to those. They research. They, ano, you, you, you will be surprised at ano, the number of time, at the hours they give to research, to read, yung ganyan or to attend other gallery openings, other art events. You'll see it, eh? there are common faces in art events like that. And you'll see most of the time the, the artists who are very committed to their art in those kinds of events because they want to learn. So basically, ganon. Ganon yung mga hinahanap po. All right. All right. Um, I hope the artists watching are taking notes of all of this, no? Um, so let's move on to our next topic, gallery representation contract. Um, what would a good gallery representation contract look like? And what is um, your practice in your gallery, um, Mr. David? Well, uh, so far we have not done any exclusive uh, relationship yet. No, uh, 
We have not tied any artist. Uh, we have a lot of artist representation, but on a very, very loose uh, uh, standard. Uh, meaning uh, it's flexible, it's casual. Uh, we, we tend to trust uh, more on mutual understanding, respect in particular, you know. And then of course, humility on both sides. We make sure that uh, whatever we put when each time, the only thing that uh, we, we, we give uh, to an artist when he shows to us is that piece of uh, uh, document that uh, defines the parameters of the show. Uh, but so far, as far as uh, contracts is concerned, uh, there are standards that are uh, being used by most galleries and uh, uh, it, it addresses, of course, your uh, definition of um, uh, tasks and uh, responsibilities of each uh, uh, of the gallery and the artist. And uh, although strictly speaking and legally binding is yung magkaroon ka ng, yung talagang contract is the management contract that will define strictly those. Kasi pagka ano, wala yan, wala, hindi yan, hindi yan talaga exclusive contract, uh, legally hindi mag-hold yan. Kung wala talagang nakitang management contract that defines the relationship, strictly speaking, in terms of the, you know, finances, the commitments, etc., etc., it should be involved, uh, it should be included in that kind of relationship, in that kind of contract. Aside from, of course, the time, how long it will be, how many, how many shows to be given, uh, should it start for one year, and within that period of one year, how many, how many shows uh, will the gallery be providing the artist? And then, of course, there must be, strictly speaking, again, if you get into the management contract, the the gallery should be able to define the the amounts you know in in concrete terms uh the the expectations that the artists want to you know generate you know maybe let's say a hundred thousand for this particular year and then maybe another year so much you know or uh you know uh, it, it should be it should be very 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 specific in terms of uh, uh the amounts in terms of uh, the expectations, in terms of uh, the number of uh, shows, group show, and uh, maybe international representation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those should be part of a good uh, contract. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, all right, so I hope that answers the question of our viewer. No, um, well, our last question would be to ask our guests um, what are the best practices so far that they have observed um, on gallery and artist relationship. So um, would you like to go first, Ricky? Okay, uh, thank you, Aline. I was just going to react to Mr. David then because I know I, I've seen a good uh, exclusive partnership between a gallery and a local artist. The gallery was an international gallery and nakita niya that the artist had real potential in the international scene and created this contract na five years long and sinabi ng gallery what, uh, what shows ang gagawin niya for the artist kapalit ng exclusivity at kapalit ng specific number of works per year. Pero uh, inaalagaan talaga nung gallery yung artist in terms of ano, yung finances, merong nakalaan na amount para merong ikabubuhay yung artist at yung kanyang pamilya, yung lahat ng mga responsibilidad ng artist as a person, as an artist, as a family man, natugunan. At the same time, andun yung ano, yung gallerist was very specific on ano, like every time that the artist produces, ito yung schedule, kunyari, year one, solo show sa Beijing, year two, solo show sa... So, nakaganyan. Tapos, ano, yung content ng art, talagang critical din yung gallerist as, an, ano, as a professional. Hindi lang siya yung 
and then magbenta tayong bulaklak. Hindi ganun. Talagang ito si artist, this is what he stands for. How can I push this artist to become the best artist that he is? Ideally, yung relationship pushes both farther and further uh, out there. So, yun yung ano ko, yung nakita ko. Tapos, in, in ano naman, in kapalit nun, na-manage din yung career ng artist. Naayos niya yung prices niya. Uh, right now, the artist has, ano, parang materially, ano, ma maayos buhay niya. Ma maganda yung pangalan niya. So, yung relationship na ganito can propel an artist really far na instead of kung sa kanya lang sa sarili niya umaasa. So, kung maganda yung relationship, malayo mararating. Thank you. Can I add something, Ali? Sure, uh, thank you. Yeah. In terms of best practices, parang it's one of my ano, um, dreams to see actually parang um, a gathering of ano, of gallery owners because I'm relatively new to young in the in the in gallery work. So I'd like to ano hear also from the um, more veteran ano gallerists their best practices because I'm sure it will help also to set guidelines for gallery owners on how they should conduct themselves and also the artists then on how to work with gallery owners because the ones that we have now are ano lang, barang a few information about how it is done abroad. Yung gan, maybe Mr. David can, ano, can also tell us more about that, yung how different the dynamics of the relationship is outside the Philippines and the, how it is here, parang it will really be nice to enumerate best practices and have some sort of regulation on how to, to practice those. All right. Um, well, yeah, that's actually a good good point though, Miss Abby. Um, sir, Mr. David, would you like to add to that? Um, as this is actually our last question, um, okay. just a brief summary for our audience and for the artists especially who are watching right now. Yes, okay, uh, except for, we're still at that stage, you know, as far as the gallery uh, international activities are concerned, it's, it's still very, very limited. And there are just uh, maybe a couple or three or four galleries that have been exposed internationally in art fairs, etc. cetera. Uh, the level of uh, awareness on international art practices abroad in the Philippines is still very limited because uh, it's still a very, very localized market. So that um, the, the way they, they, they conduct themselves internationally, I mean, I'm talking about international galleries like uh, Sverner, like the Gaussian, like uh, Pace, et cetera, all these big names, you know. I mean, it's, it, it's already at the level that uh, more or less dictates, you know, the, the practices. Uh, and and uh, and that's, that's very, that, uh, that dictates the practices so that uh, the levels of professionalism or the level of professionalism is sustained, you know, um, because there is, of course, even among the, the big uh, players, there is a constant communication, constant dialogue. And of course, they, just like any other, what you call this, uh, just like any other uh, sector, you know, or business sectors, uh, they, they, they watch what their uh, competitors do. In the Philippines, it's really more of being very protective of their artists. You know, there is no, no, not that much opening yet. There is not that much collaboration yet. That's why gallery, uh, uh, represent, I mean, gallery exchanges, you know, or gallery collaborations, it's hardly, any, uh, hardly existent in the country. Unlike abroad where you see you know, big, big projects being uh, uh, supported and patronized by several uh, players in the market. Okay, okay, sir. Um, yeah, as much as you would like to uh, discuss more on this, uh, we are running out of time, but um, no worries because we have more live streams like this in the future and we will invite more guests and get more perspectives from um, everybody. So let us thank our guests, uh, Ms. Abby Felix, Ricky Francisco, and Jimmy Hill David today for joining us um, and sharing their experience 
and their recommendations. And we um, really hope that the artists watching are learning a lot from this talk. So if you missed our previous topics on the Art Response Project, drop by our YouTube channel, Museums Matter. You'll see the talk of Dr. Laya Bukirin on writing exhibition proposals. You'll also find a video of Dr. Pascual Gutay and Danielle de la Cruz on healthcare management for artists. Our succeeding topics will be in time for International Muse Museums Month. Our topics include Taxation 101 for Creatives, Niche Art Spaces, and a key topic for all artists, intellectual property rights. So make sure to follow our page, uh, Ilo, Ilo Museum of Contemporary Art for updates. All right, and make sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel, Museums Matter, if you want to view or watch this talk again. So on the screen, you will see where you can contact us. Maybe you can request for more topics for talks like this and um, We'll try to organize it for you. Thank you everyone for joining us and see you in the next Art Response Project live stream.